All right, welcome back everybody. This is the next video and actually this is one of those rabbit holes where we're going to dive down on a separate topic uh, aside from what we had already planned out which is great because I appreciate the feedback and the questions and there's a lot of uh, good information that came from this listener question. So Tim, thank you for the question. If you guys want to look at the question more in depth, go to, um, I believe it was video three in the Better Bow Hunting series and Tim posed a great question. I'll, I'll um, give you the cliff notes here. Tim's shooting a 27 inch draw length bow. He's closer to 26 as what he should be shooting. Going with a little bit longer bow to try to generate some more speed. Right now he's shooting a, I believe he said 420 grain arrow at about 274 to 275 feet per second ish. Okay. He's looking, and this is with a, a switchback. So it's an older, older series bow. Uh, I believe these bows were in the 316 uh, to 320 IBO range. I don't remember, it's been a little while back, but I believe that's the category, the speed range that this bow is in. So a few things I want to talk about. Tim is looking to be able to shoot a you know, 480 plus grain arrow and still stay in that 270 to hopefully 280 feet per second range. Right now he's shooting 70 pounds. Ideally, that's what he'd like to be shooting. It's, it's a little bit of a stretch to be able to go from here to here, but not overly a stretch. Now, if we look at some of the constants, some of the numbers here, the things to know is these speed, reading, speed ratings that the manufacturers put out are for um, marketing, are for that they're, they're not, you got to take them with a grain of salt. If I set up a brand new bow on the market right now that gives me a three promises a 340 feet per second rating, right? 30 inch. So there's there's different methods of testing, and, and, and I'm not gonna go into that on this video here, but 340 feet per second is what they're advertising. And you shoot it at three uh, 30 inch with a 350 grain arrow, which is IBO, you'd be lucky to get in that. 330 to 332 feet per second actual speed rating okay this is what this is more real life this is flux now if you even get to the detail of understanding some manufacturers will send out a bow it, it says it's supposed to be 30 inches it's pulling closer to 30 and a quarter 30 and 3 eighths I'm gonna again that's not I don't want to go down that rabbit hole what I want to focus on here is some of the numbers and some of the constants and understanding that this speed rating is closer to this but, and then one other thing, as you start looking at a 340 feet per second bow, roughly every inch of draw length that you lose, so let's just say we're talking about Tim again here, who is a 20, he's shooting 27, but closer to 26, but just for math purposes, this bow's maximum speed rating is going to be closer to 310 feet per second. Okay, roughly, again, roughly 10 feet per second. It could be 8 feet per second, it could be 12 feet per second. There's a lot of variables in place here. But roughly for easy math, you're looking at a best possible case scenario at about a 310 feet per second bow at 27 inches um, that is real life. So again, going back to the question, how do we get from here to hopefully here? So a couple things initially jump out at me. And number one is the bow model. Obviously, we're going to have to look at getting into a different bow model to hopefully achieve that speed. So looking at this IBO rating to possibly a uh, like a, a Hoyt Turbo for example or some of the other speed category bows that are going to put you in that 345 to 360 feet per second range. Okay. Now again if you go we're, we're looking roughly uh, at 30 feet per second here in change from from bow just in, just in a bow model category all right so that's one thing that you can look at right out the gate and say yeah well obviously there's some bows out there that will give them more speed because of they're they're more efficient the cams and shorter brace height whatever the case is newer model newer technology so can we think about getting Tim into a faster shooting bow absolutely here's the other thing to consider okay we actually want to be at 26 inch 
or 26, I'm just going to say 26 to 26 and a half to get Tim proper alignment, structure, and posture so it would be more accurate at distance. So by going to a speed bow, a couple things come into play. Oh, it's five and a half to six inch brace height bow is less forgiving. Uh, it's going to be more aggressive. On the cams themselves, every manufacturer is different, but yes, you will see possibly a more aggressive draw cycle, possibly a shorter valley, um, possibly a little bit more jump in the hand with some of those speed bows. Now, to me, draw cycle is lower in the importance category when I look at a bow. I like, to, I like the specs of a longer axle to axle bow for stability, and I, I really focus on the feel on the back end of that bow. Uh, a little bit of hand jump to me doesn't, or, or hand shock, hand vibration, doesn't bother me. I'm used to shooting target bows that had a bunch of hand shocks. So that's one of those categories that, again, follows lower on the spectrum when I'm looking personally at a bow. So if you can get past a little bit harder draw cycle, then, you know, then a speed bow could be a good option. If you can get past um, some of the other features there that, again, a little bit shorter valley, those are things you have to consider when you're going from a IBO rating here up to that 345 to 360 feet per second rating. The next thing I want to talk about is brace height, right? Forgiveness. People often think that a six inch brace height is less forgiving than a seven or seven and a half inch brace height. It's all relative. If we're looking at someone in a 26 to 26 and a half inch draw length range, their power stroke in theory, so again, I, I don't want to go into how brace height is measured because obviously it's not measured from the burger hole, it's in front. But for easy math, just to, to break this down, somebody with a 26 inch draw, 6 inch brace height, in theory has a 20 inch power stroke, which is actually less than that, but this is for easy math. Someone who has a 30 inch draw length shooting a 7 inch brace height bow, has a 23 inch power stroke. So yes, this is going to deliver more power, but at the same token, this arrow is coming off the string faster than this one. So in theory, you have less opportunity to influence that shot. So this can be perceived as more forgiving than this, even though it's a shorter brace height. So again, I know that this is not exact because of where uh, brace heights measured and draw lengths measured. But for easy numbers, I just wanted to focus on that. A shorter draw length shooter should consider a shorter brace height bow, at least consider it if they can get past some of those other features to give them the more additional performance. A couple other numbers I want to talk about here is with this category bow, if, ten, if just changing one thing, going from a 420 to 480 grain arrow, got 60 grains, roughly going to equal 30 feet per second less. Okay, it's roughly, in this category, three grains of arrow weight per foot per second. Okay, so three grains of arrow weight in change is roughly going to give you one feet per second. Again, 60 grains, 30 feet per second. I'm sorry, 20 feet per second. Can't even do math. Okay, 60 grains, 20 feet per second. So where he was shooting 274 feet per second before, he would be in that 252 to 256 feet per second range if he just shot this bow and bumped up to a 400 grade, 80 grain arrow. So now we look at that number, because that's what he'd want to go with, and then we, we look at this number and say, okay, we're, we're looking at potentially shooting a um, 350 feet per second IBO bow. So in theory, he could potentially pick up 25 to 30 feet per second by going to a more efficient bow. And is that going to put him in back into that to that honey to that sweet spot where he was looking for? Yeah, potentially. So again, looking at some of the numbers, looking at some of the generalizations, because this is a generalization. Okay, this is this part of the generalization. Again, this in in just simple change from. Manufacturer ratings, manufacturer ratings is a generalization, but again, you're using some of the numbers to help hopefully guide you through that flow chart to hopefully tell you, hey, yeah, well, in the right situation, a 480 grain arrow 
could potentially be in that mid 270s to 280 feet per second range with the right bow. So there's, there's a lot there. The one last thing I want to touch on in this possible 10 headed monster with trying to figure out a, a next step or a progression, right? Or a possible fix to what you want to achieve. Me personally, I'll shoot a little bit more draw weight on a smoother cam to generate what I want than shoot an aggressive cam. And again, I don't, I'm not, I don't get too hung up on the cam systems um, per se, but I can tell you that in many relations, shooting three to five feet per second more, or excuse me, three to five foot, three to five pounds of draw weight more is an alternative I would take other than shooting a uh, more aggressive cam. So whether it's a noise standpoint, a lot of times those, those faster shooting bows are a little bit louder, not always, but in, in uh, my case, I will usually take that a few extra feet, a few extra pounds of draw weight to achieve what I want in, in this whole kind of type of scenario, again, this category. So a lot of things to consider. A, a bow change, you know, a manufacturer change maybe, a model change, a spec change could get you what you want. Understand that manufacturers' IBO ratings are, uh, I'm going to say they're just, they're just uh, infatuated. They're, they're usually 5 to 8, 10 feet per second off. Just, it's just is what it is. Anything, anytime you start adding more things to the string, it starts to slow that string down more. So um, even going to take more feet per second off that bow. So know that the numbers that's, that are shown on, on a manufacturer's catalog or a magazine, you can't go off that. If you're a 27 and a half, 28 inch guy, it doesn't happen. Especially if you start adding arrow weight on top of that 350 grain mark, measured at 70 pounds, um, you start to drop off again. Roughly three grains of arrow weight equals one feet per second. So in this scenario again of Tim wanting to bump up about 60 grains, you can lose about 20 feet per second. A lot of things to consider but if you just sit, sit down, take a few minutes, and go with some of the constants that you know that are, again, some more generalizations, but they're going to get you within two to four feet per second, worst case, five feet per second, on an overall build if you know which direction to go down the path and help get you there. So I would say in this situation, Tim, I would encourage you to go out and test shoot, if you can, as many bows in that category of that 345 plus feet per second range. See if you can find one that you're comfortable with, that you feel like you shoot well, that you can hold well, the draw cycle doesn't kill your shoulder, and, and start there. If you can find one, great. Go to your arrow build, progress down the process. If you can't find a bow that you feel shoots great, then I would go to the next step, which would be maybe looking at a bow in that 330 to 345 IBO range, and then shoot those and say, oh yeah, this one at 70 is is smoother than whatever, maybe I consider going up in poundage a little bit to achieve what I want uh, performance-wise. So a lot of options out there. Great question. I um, hope I didn't overcomplicate things. I try to keep it simple as, as, as I can, understanding some of the general starting points as, as, as I'll leave it at that. So we're going to continue on with our process, but again, leave your questions, comment below. Some things that, these are some of the topics that we deal with every day at the Pro Shop. Uh, especially, especially No Limits Archery where I, I spend my time, but also online I, I answer a lot of questions for, for listeners and customers outside of the Denver area and happy to do it here again. So um, online store, all these items and more should be online here shortly. We've got some more custom products that are be coming down the way with the Alpha Bow Hunting logo, Alpha Bow Hunting brand. And, and like always, I just we're here to try to help make you better, help you, you know, Unleash that inner alpha, if you will, so when you have in the woods, you're as prepared as you can be. Also look forward to uh, seeing some more workshops in-house. We do a lot of stuff at No Limits Archery. Uh, we're going to be taking our all-day workshop and adding the progression to that this year, which is a situational bow hunting workshops. Some classroom, some in the field, uh, application tests, practicals, if you will. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So look forward to seeing that on uh, alphabowhunting.com, and we'll see you guys all soon.